Would you look at that? A lithophane light box. Iron Man. Thor. Iron Man. Thanos. A composite image of the whole gang. Ain't she a beauty? <laughs> oh, hey. You look like you want to learn how to design a lithophane light box. Well, the way that I would do that is I'd go to lithophanemaker.com and I would click on the picture of the light box. Okay, once you're there, you need to upload your images. You do top, front, left, right, as stated. And here we go. Now, there are a lot of settings that you can change to get the light box that you want with the dimensions that you want. But I like all of the settings as they are, except I'm going to change the lithophane resolution to get the prettiest lithophane box that my computer can process. I'm going to reduce the lithophane resolution to 0.2 millimeters per pixel. So now the distance between pixels on your final lithophane light box will be 0.2 millimeters as opposed to 0.25, which was the default. Uh, this will make it so that your light box has a finer resolution, but it also makes it so that your STL file is a little bit larger. So, you know, there is a little bit of a give and take, but I'm going to just go for the prettiest one I can right now. And then I need to crop my images. So I'm going to center this one on Iron Man's laser arm because, duh. And then I'm going to get a little bit more of that bling in there. Oh, one into five. So that looks good. And now you just create the STL, and it takes you here to remind you that it would be great if you could link to lithophanemaker.com whenever you share pictures and videos of lithophane of lithophanes made using the tool uh, on social media or wherever you share these pictures or videos. And then on top of that, um, I've got a YouTube, I've got a Thingiverse, a Facebook, a Twitter, an Instagram, and just like them all, subscribe to them all, keep it easy. And then um, on Thingiverse, you know, I've got many designs. If you could like all of those, it would increase the visibility of lithophanemaker.com so that other people find it and use it as well. So now, you just save what was created for you and now I'm extracting the zip file that you just saved and um, here's what's in it you have two STL files you have the box STL file and the top lithophane STL file and then you also have a settings file which is a text file that just tells you what settings you used when you designed the light box at lithophanemaker.com. So now we go into Cura to slice it. And before you even bring the STL file in, I recommend that you turn off slice automatically because I had just kind of alluded to these files can become very large, hundreds of megabytes. Um, I think the estimate for mine was just 280 megabytes. So it's a big honking file, and if you have to slice that repeatedly, it could uh, really bog down your computer. So if you just take slice automatically off, you'll reduce the number of times that it's sliced. Okay, now I just pull the STL file in here. Okay, so here it is. And um, there are three main settings that you want to be concerned with. They are the layer height, the speed, and you want to make sure that your lithophane walls are full. Okay, no gaps, no infill on the lithophane walls. So here's the layer height I use. I use 0.12. Smaller is better for quality typically, but it also takes more time. So that's the trade-off. Um, the way that I make sure that my lithophane image walls are are full with no infill is I use um, many many wall lines so my wall line count is five 
which since there are two walls, it makes it so that my uh, my my thickness of the wall is four millimeters for both the walls together, which is larger than the maximum thickness that I selected at lithfanemaker.com. So it'll be a solid wall. Uh, some people also use 100% infill, and I've used them both, and I could not tell any difference whatsoever. But you know, to each his own, obviously, um, because this light box has this uh, wall in the back and you know it has a frame around it um, you can save a little bit of plastic and a little bit of time if you just use a, a large wall line count but not like infinity just large enough to ensure that it's always gonna have enough wall there for even the maximum thickness of your lithophane okay so now to the third main setting that would be speed so here you can see uh, my speed is 40 and most of this print will be walls so you can see the wall speed is 20 and the inner wall speed is uh, 30 um, pretty slow so now of course you know here, here are the rest of my settings you can look at them just run through that okay now obviously I think you all know what to do now you just hit prepare and then um, you just print it now you should have everything you need to assemble your lithophane light box you need a top-of-the-box lithophane the light box itself a light bulb and a light socket. Now you set it all down on the table, you take a step back, you grab your right ear with your right hand and your left ankle with your left hand and you hop around circles three times. It's very important. And voila! Just like that you have a working lithophane light box. Congratulations! If you like this video, please consider liking or subscribing to my YouTube channel, Facebook page, Instagram account, Twitter account, and Thingiverse account. And like I said before, just keep it simple and like them all. Have a good one.